welcome back to Crafters TV. You're joining us at a fabulous moment because over the next couple of hours, we are all going to be craft along craft along is our opportunity to all craft together in real time uh, my name's joe i am not here on my own though oh no the hottie scotty himself is in the building and raring to go how are you craig i am absolutely that rare to go for sure on this craft along here shall we have a look a little peruse as to what we're going to be making on this craft along here we go now look at the front of this lovely card lovely isn't it really really nice however Let's go in and open it up and we have got our twist and pop. We are going to be using the cupcakes on this one here from the mats and layers, from the die cutting, the mechanism, the colouring, the construction. We are all going to be doing that step by step throughout the next couple of hours. Awesome. Uh, now, it's not too late to join us. Uh, of course, uh, you can all uh, get your bits and bobs together that you need. Craig, people have got time, haven't they, to gather their, gather their things? Absolutely. Really, really do. So if you've not already got a hold of them, then we're going to have a look right on your screen in a moment or two as to what you're going to need. Now, this is what you're going to need if you want to be making exactly what I'm going to be making. You might want to change it slightly, but what I will be making is the twist and pop mechanism die, twist and pop cupcake dies, Going to need the scoreboard, contemporary waterfall paper pad, stamping card, black mat card, watercolour card, orange and yellow ribbon, your guillotine. You will also need a few other elements as well, just to get the card nicely constructed. And that is, of course, foam pads, tacky glue, all-purpose glue, hot glue gun, tape pen, low-tack tape, your classic pen of Poppy DR2, or some kind of red pen. We've then got quick dry ink pads, Bordeaux and pink tulip, and pigment ink pads of orange and straw bale. And we've got the last couple of things to really finish it off. And that is then going to be popping up just in a moment or two to finish off. Oh, there we go, it's on. There are our pearl gems with uh, some yellow gems as well. Water and paintbrush, bone folder tool, uh, tissue or kitchen paper, pokey tool, glass mat or a stamping mat, pencil, rubber or tweezer. So you can see from that full list, that is everything that I use to construct this one here. So if you have at least all of these elements at hand length, then we'll be able to make exactly what I showed you right at the very start. Awesome. Now, I know what you're thinking. Gosh, I really wish I'd have got these when they launched so I could partake in this craft along. Well, you are in luck. It's not too late. Don't you worry because with uh, this show and all of our shows that we bring you here at Crafters TV, you're able to watch them back at any point. So what we've done is we have brought back an awesome deal for you with regards to the Twist and Pop. So what you're going to get here in this collection is you're going to get the Twist and Pop mechanism itself in there, first and foremost. Then you've got everything that you need to decorate these up in a whole host of different things. So I'll take you through what you've got. There's loads of different styles in here for you. So you've got the cupcake one, which is this one here, firstly, which is absolutely awesome. You're also going to receive in this deal the balloons, which are these ones just here. Absolutely love these. Going to be great for all of those birthday cards, which we do make so, so many of. You've also got the presents in here as well. Again, really nice, versatile designs, which could be used for a whole host of different things. Have you got a love interest in your life? Maybe you're going to send them, uh, them a pop-out heart. You've got that included in there. You've also got uh, some even more generic ones as well, some ones that may, may work well for photos too. I think these work awesome as um, scrapbook elements too, if you want to add them to your scrapbook pages. And you've got the frames in here as well. You get all of those and the working mechanism included as well. £90 in the UK, $105 if you are in the US. Platinum members, you're looking at £72 here in the UK or $84, which is a really really awesome saving now uh, that'd be a chance to be a fine thing Johnny said we're all off to we're all off to Florida in a moment I wish we were but someone who is in Florida is our special guest for this craft along it's the lovely Kathy how are you Kathy I'm doing well thank you 
awesome. Such a pleasure to have you join us for this craft along. Uh, so we'll be dropping in with Kathy again uh, periodically as we go uh, throughout the show. I know kathy has got all of her uh, things gathered that she needs uh, to get some awesome crafting done. Uh, lots of you uh, tuning in and saying hi as well. Any questions that you've got as we go through, anything you need to recap, anything you missed, I'm here for you. So uh, you can contact me over on Facebook, it's Crafters TV, or you can of course drop into uh, YouTube. If you're over on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe and pop yourself in the comments there with any questions or comments. If you need to speed up or slow down, we can do all of those things for you. So just let me know. Uh, but yes, let's just go back over to Kathy again. Kathy uh, froze there for a second. Oh, that's better, Kathy. We've got you now. Have you got all of your bits and bobs gathered and ready to go? I think I do. I'm hoping I do anyway. Oh, it looks lovely. And I can see the sun peeking through behind you there. It looks beautiful. I bet it's a lovely day there in Florida, isn't it, Kathy? It's gorgeous like it always is. No oh. storms yet, at least, thank goodness. <laughs> Whereabouts in Florida are you? Uh, I live about an hour from Orlando. I'm oh. in the villages, Florida. Oh, gorgeous. I've had the pleasure of going to Orlando. It was beautiful. The place where dreams come true, Kathy. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> right, brilliant. Kathy, I will let you get uh, settled down and I'll be dropping in with you as we go uh, through the shows. Uh, Linda Noel saying, love these tutorials. Right, Craig, if you're ready, it appears by the comments that everyone else at home is. So, uh, time to crack on. Let's go for it. And let's get started where we need to start with all cards and that is the card blank. So we're going to take our uh, piece of our white smooth stamping card and we're going to cut this uh, into five, well let's, let's go the long way first of all. So let's turn it around this way. So we're going to cut that all the way up to 11 and three quarters. So basically it is your full length of your A4 card stock as it is. So we can then turn it around and we're going to do that to five and three quarters. We're going to trim that excess bit off. Now you can either use the guillotine or you can then come in with your scoreboard and what we're going to do is we're going to pop that up to the edge. Let's take our score line and then we're going to score also at five and three quarters. So we're going to score down into here, folding that one in half and that has given us our card blank. Awesome. All good to go. So what was, was that measurement again, sorry, Craig? So that was the, if you're using your A4 card stock, so that was the full length of yep. A4, so 11 and 3 quarters, and then we cut at 5 and 3 quarters as well. Brilliant. And then what we were able to do then was just scored in half to fold, and we've got our card blank all awesome. good to go. So we can set our scoreboard out the way for now. We're going to go back in with our guillotine. Now we're going to go in, that paper pad was the uh, contemporary water colour cardstock, not waterfall cardstock. Just in case you're in your craft room hunting away for a waterfall cardstock, it's water coloured. So what we're going to do with this one here is we're going to take, I've taken the stripe one because they are all double uh, sided. We're going to go for the stripe side here and we want to cut two squares that are five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So we're going up five and a quarter and then we're going to turn it around here. So we're going to do two of them. So then that gives us our two layers that are five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Then what we can do is let's bring in a piece of our black uh, mat card stock. And this one, what we're going to do is we're going to make that so it's a quarter of an inch bigger. So we are going to cut this one to five and a half inches by five and a half inches. So we can take our next one in. Great question coming in from Evelyn. At what point do I need to get my hot glue gun heating up? Will you give us a, uh, a little signpost of when that is, Craig? Uh, pretty much, it'll be towards the end. It's just for the ribbon. However, what I would do, anything like that, I always will just stick it on at the beginning. You know, it's okay. obviously it's safety at the side here, but I would just plug my, uh, my um, glue gun in right at the start and then it means it's going to be good to go for when we do come to the end of it. So we've now got our two squares, so once again, that was two of them at five and a quarter by five and a quarter each. And then we've also got our two black layers that are five and a half inches by five and a half inches all the way around as well. Awesome. So we can set them ones out of the way for the time being. So I'm gonna move my guillotine out of the way. 
Then what we're going to do is if we come in now with our plates, so we're going to go in with the large Gemini, and I'm also going to come in with my cupcake die. So this is the one that we are using. So we're going in with a cupcake. So we don't need to worry about the mechanism just yet. What we'll want to do is we want to go in and we're going to do a little bit of the cutting when it comes to the actual cupcake first and foremost. So here Brilliant. we go. Uh, we will recap all the measurements again, won't we, at the end of each demo section. So if there's anything you've missed, best thing to do is just pop it to a side for a sec because then after Craig's recapped, you'll have then a chance to do anything. So if you do fall behind, don't worry, we'll give you loads of opportunity to get caught up in this craft along. Absolutely. So what we've got now is I've taken a piece of our watercolour card here and we're going to go in with our two dies. So we've got our decorative die being all of these cupcakes and then we've got the outline die which we will come along and cut just shortly. So what we're going to do is if we bring in our watercolour card, you can trim it down a bit smaller if you want but I'm just going to run the full thing through at the moment. I'm going to bring in my plates. So we're going to pop these ones in. Same plate configuration with any of our dies. Plastic, magnetic, and then top plate. And then what we can do is we can then run this one through, like so. Now, you will be able to get these to die cut with your Gemini Junior or your MIDI. What you would do is you would start by popping it onto your Gemini Junior plates, run it through, it's going to cut, you know, about three quarters of the die, then what you would need to do is take it out, turn the die around, still onto the plate, and run the remaining side through. So you can still do this if you've got your smaller die cutting machines, but of course using your large die cutting machines, it's going to do it all in one pass. So what we can do is if I set that for the out the side for the time being, and then we're going to come in, and we've got our little release holes. So if I take these ones out, so what you've got is you're ending up with four different designed cupcakes. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of watercolour in. Could paper piece if you want with other ones that you're doing at home, but we are going to decorate this with watercolours. And then what we can do is let's just put that to the side for a second. And then for the back of our, um, for the back of our cupcakes, we're going to bring in some of our white smooth stamping card and we're going to do the outline now. So let's bring this one in. And this is going to give our cupcakes a platform jaw to stick it onto once we've done a bit of colouring. Awesome. Running it through. And then that's the main bits, if not all the main bits, apart from the mechanism that we will do in a moment or two. So if we do this bit, we will then cut the mechanism and then we'll take a little bit of a break and we'll come back to you, let anyone get caught up. Brilliant. And that will be us then ready to do our uh, colouring just in a second. Anna, Anna D says she can't bring herself to use black card on her cards. She thinks she may have developed a phobia of black cardstock, Craig. All right, okay. Wow. Oh, well, you can use, use anything any you want. colour. Yeah. Any colour you want. Maybe you want to use a deep navy. It's entirely up to yourself. So last bit before we uh, take a little uh, break, what we're doing, another piece of white smooth stamping card. Now we're going to go in with the mechanism. With just any die. size with this card, Craig, it's just as long as it's as big as the die. As long as it's big enough. So in actual fact, you'll be able to pop this through many off-cut bits that you've got from other die cutting. Hence why I didn't want to go and use a full big sheet for this. I had a piece that was left over. Again, it is just our white smooth stamping card. And as you say, Joe, as long as it's big enough for it to fit on top of. So we're going to tape this one down just so it doesn't move. And then we're going to run this one through. I'm not going to do any folding of this mechanism just yet. We will do the cutting. And then what we can do is later on, as we go through the next process, we can do all the folding and bending uh, as and when it occurs. But this one will come out. And anyone that needs to get caught up, once I show you this bit, you'll have time to do so. So here we are. So we've got our mechanism which gives you the score lines. I know it's hard to see here, but if you're doing it at the same pace as me, you'll notice at the moment you've got those score lines already in place. So is it worthwhile just seeing the measurements quickly, yeah, Joe? Uh, yeah, including the card blank as well. Including Craig, the card right. blank, no problem whatsoever. So the card blank was just from a piece of A4 colour cards, uh, coloured, 
white cardstock. So it was the width of, or the length of your A4, so 11 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters. And then what we'd done is we scored, well, which was halfway, 5 and 3 quarters, to give us our card blank. And then what we've done is taken a piece of the cardstock. We've trimmed this one down. This is also trimmed down to five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And we've done that twice. Then we've taken black matte cardstock and we've trimmed this one down again twice. We've trimmed this one down to five and a half inches by five and a half inches, giving us two of them. Then we used a decorative die to cut out in white smooth stamping card. We've done the backdrop of the cupcakes. Oh, sorry, Joe, just to go over that again. That one we cut in our watercolour card. This one we cut within our white smooth stamping card. And then the mechanism we also cut from our white smooth stamping card as well. Awesome, right, then we'll give people a little opportunity to get themselves caught up, Craig. If you've got any questions, now is your chance to get them into me, Crafters TV, across on Facebook, or of course, Crafters Companion, if you are joining us over on YouTube. As I said earlier, if you don't have these elements, uh, don't worry, it's not too late to get your hands on them. Uh, the full collection is still available to you, and you can watch this back at any point. I know some of you love to craft along live in real time with our experts, whereas I know some of you, including uh, the lovely Sarah Brown, uh, who who will be watching and then uh, crafting along afterwards. Some of you like to see it all run through once and then have a chance uh, to give it a go. If you don't yet have the products, so don't worry because they are available to you right now. Uh, and within here, what you're going to receive is you're going to get the mechanism which allows you to put these together and then all of these wonderful designs that are in here as well. Uh, so you've got the cupcakes, which is this one just here. They are available as well on a two for 30 pounds or $35. So if you wanted to get a couple of these, absolutely you could. Do though, of course, make sure that you add that mechanism into your basket. The mechanism on its own is $7.99 in the UK or $9.95 if you're in the US. You've got the presents here. These work great at Christmas, wouldn't they, as well as all year through. You will also receive in here the hearts, which are these ones here for all you lovebirds out there. You've also got the oval frames. So these are really great for scrapbook images or uh, even in things like your memory books. I mean, these would work absolutely perfectly. And then finally, you also have the square frames in here as well. If you want to get all of them together, of course, that as always represents the best value for money, which is what everyone is doing at the moment. In fact, everyone saved £25.93 or $24.65. However, Club Inspire Platinum members uh, are saving £43 in the UK, $45 in the US, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, anything people that can do, if anyone didn't have the mechanism, Craig, is there anything that they could do to create a mechanism if they were a whiz with a scoreboard, do you think? I mean, it's going to be a lot easier if you've just got the mechanism, isn't it? it is, there will be a way to do it. Um, I... I couldn't tell you right here as to what the measurements would be to do your own mechanism. There will be a way to do it because it's just about scoring, uh, but without having time beforehand to show, uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you right here, right now, how you would create your own one. Uh, why the different types of papers used, Craig, is what Julie would like to know. So um, between the watercolour and the stamping, I think she means you, you put, cut one element in watercolour, yeah. one element in stamping card. Well, the one that we cut within watercolour is because we um, were going to watercolour onto it. And then, obviously, the white one on the back, that is just so wet. We're stabilising it with the back. So that's why we've used two different ones. Brilliant. OK. Uh, Catherine, uh, I think Catherine's all caught up and uh, ready to go. I think, judging by the comments, Craig, everyone seems caught up, ready to go. It's very lonely place, the comments during these craft alongs, you know. I always think, gosh, have I done something wrong? No one wants to chat to me during these. It's brilliant, though, because it means you're all concentrating on creating uh, the project that Craig is working on. What I would say, and I'll give you the details more as we get towards the end of the craft along, uh, if we get finished uh, with about sort of 20 minutes to go, I think we're going to be finished in good time today, don't you, Craig? I think so. Yeah, so it will give you a great opportunity to get yourself finished and then send pictures in to me of your finished craft along. And you'll be able to do that by emailing studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. But I'll tell you more about that as we get towards the end of the show. So really lovely to see what you've created with Craig in real time. Um, oh, 
One question, Mariah says, what size is the base card supposed to be? The A2 or A4, you called it, Craig, has thrown her off. So would you mind giving her the length measurement as well as the width measurement? Well, the, for people that are not using uh, A4 as their base. Well, your, ca your card blank needs to be five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So just, just take a six inch card blank and then just trim it down a quarter of an inch from the top and the side and you'll have your five and three quarter. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Craig. You're very uh, welcome. Well, I think that's uh, everyone ready to crack on if you are. I think so as well. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let me get my ink pads ready to go. So what I wanted to do as well. Now, the, the colours that we've got and I've put on the screen. So we've got our orange quick dry. We've got our uh, straw bale quick dry. We've got our uh, pigment, our pink tulip opaque pigment. And then we've also got our Bordeaux. Um, ink pad so these ones so yes yeah, so our quick dry is our orange and our quick dry is our straw bale and then our pink tulip is our pigment and so is the Bordeaux what I'm away to do you can do if you've got the water reactive ink pads but I wanted to show you that you can still color and you can still watercolor whether you're using the quick dry or the uh, pigment so what this is where you're going to need your glass mat or your craft mat so what we can do is let's bring back in our die cut and this is on our watercolour so this is where we can bring all of these in. So we're going to go in with the orange and let's bring this onto our glass mat. We're going to go in with the straw bale and we're going to pop that onto our glass mat. We can do exactly the same with the pink tulip onto our glass mat and then we're going to go in with our Bordeaux as well. So I know that, you know, when we uh, come to do water colouring on, uh, you know, Colour Me Happy shows and that, we'll always do water reactive. But it does go to show that you can still do bits of water colouring. Because your glass mat is a non-porous surface, it's still going to sit on there. So you can come in with any of your waters like we're going to do here in our paintbrush. So what I'm going to do is let's take that last little bit out. So let's start, we're going to start on this one here. We're going to go in with our... Uh, pigment so our pink tulip and we're going to go straight over the top and I'm going to start with a, a lighter tone of the pink tulip we're laying down that base and then I can go back in again and then I can start to really add accent colors and depth by the side here so we're going in and we're working our way around and similar to if you were doing other watercolours or shading, I'm going to follow the lines that are within the icing of this cupcake. And we're going to get a bit of depth towards the left hand side. And we're going to pull it and cut, uh, follow all along the lines along the bottom. So I don't always need to go in with water onto my paintbrush. I tend to layer up my brush with our um, ink pad as well as our paintbrush just with water to start with and then I let my paintbrush it's kind of like drying out with water and then we're going direct with the colour so we get that real intensity of it like this and I'm going to carry on to this next bit here and I'm going to do exactly the same onto the second one here of the cupcake icing awesome we do have uh, the ink pads that Craig is using as a little collection available to you over on the website craftscompanion.co.uk.com.eu uh, click shop the show I'll take you through all of that uh, a little later there's also a really wonderful selection of uh, card pads and paper pads available to you in this show as well I'll take you through all of that as we go through the show really want to try and use a nice selection of different uh, mediums as well hence why I want to do something it's not that it's different but as I said a moment ago, you don't always see us doing quick dry or opaque pigment for water colouring. So I want to bring them in so you could see that you could do. Maybe you don't have any of our um, water reactive. And I may have, you know, twisted a few arms to get these deals for these ones here. You did, and you got a great deal on those, Craig, as well. Twelve seventy two, and you can use uh, your Club Inspire discount on top of that as well. Great going, Craig. I really, really tried, tried to get the best ones that we could, but also not only the best ones that I could, but the best colours that we could. 
you know, so these are ones that you're going to be using quite a lot your bright colours. You know, we do use our browns and maybe uh, our topaz greens and that, but you know, these are the ones that you're going to be using a lot more when it comes to your stamping, your colouring, um, and any of your other ink techniques that you want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just layer up just a little bit more of the pink tulip. So we've done this base. So you'll be able to see, uh, even there from up above, that's brilliant. You can see how we're starting to get that shade in as it's working all the way around. If you want it to go back in and add even more depth, then you can do. If you want to maybe go in with a tiny little bit of Bordeaux and pick that one out and follow that all the way around, then you can do it as well. You can do a multitude of different ways, either laying just one color down, like we did with the pink tulip, or if you want to come along with a little bit of the Bordeaux and blend it in, giving it that extra shading, then you've got that option as well. So shading them out. Uh, and again, if you wanted to, Craig, I'm guessing you could use all of your different colouring mediums, you know, it's whatever you, it's your choice, isn't it? Could you actually just cut this bit in a pattern cardstock if you wanted to, Craig, and, you know, lay that over? Yeah, you can do, yep. So it's kind of like an overlaying paper piece and sort of effect. So yeah, if you want to use your sparkle pens, would look lovely. Tri blends or classic, yep, also look lovely as well. But if you want to come in, as you say, Joe, and go in with any of your um, card stocks or maybe your pattern papers, and you want to die cut that again. So what I would do is I do what I've done and cut it out in white. That's going to give you your base, so you can start to layer all your different patterned layers over the top, and then you can come along and start to stick them into place. Works really, really well. You be following along, and there are no major questions at the moment. Uh, Katie is reporting, which is great. Fab. It's uh, come the craft along, Joe. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't ever want to have your job on this bit. It's like you say. This is when it goes really quiet, and it's it's a good sign. But still, I wouldn't want to be you when you're you're waiting on comments. I'm just coming playing through. Angry Birds on my phone over here. Craig. Is that That's what it fine. was? No, 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 really not. Can you imagine? I've got come back to me. I've got my Nintendo Game Boy out. <laughs> I thought I'd seen the Tinder app open. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I'm, uh, I, I can't. I couldn't possibly comment, Craig. I mean, <laughs> Sorry, I'm only going to get myself in trouble if I uh, push on from there. <laughs> So what we can do now is I'm happy with the way that I've got two of these pinks here. So I'm going to now go in with our orange here. So I'm going to do the icing on this one and then also this one here. So very uh, similar to what I've done a moment ago. I'm going to lay in with the orange and then I'm going to then bring in extra little of depth by starting to do extra watercolour in. So I'm going to lay that straight in and I've really got my paintbrush nice and wet for this one. So it's a nice bright orange. And this one is the quick dry version that I'm using. So let's go in, I'm gonna get some more of the water in. So if I then really go in, start to lay that color down. And if at the moment, so at the moment, you can see how I've got a little bit more uh, intensity to one side than I do at the other. Don't worry, because remember, we're going to come back in with some more colour and we can start to blend all of that out. And that's the good thing with it being uh, watercolouring techniques that we're doing. We can start to blend them all out. So what I would do then is I'm going to come in now. I'm going to go straight to this side and do this one. That's given this chance just a little bit of time to dry. And then it means that as that dries, we can come back in and go in with a lot more depth of a uh, striking orange color. So we can go in here, laying that base down of the color. That's now going to give that a little bit of time to dry. Now we can go back in and we're going to start to follow some of these. So in case anyone wondering, the paintbrush I'm using is size six but you know, it could be your real fine ones. You maybe want to go in with your thicker ones. You've got that option, but it is size six that I'm using here. It's nice to see some coloring techniques in the craft along as well, Craig. It's the first one I've done where we've had any kind of coloring techniques in. Uh, and nice to see coloring techniques used uh, involving our ink pads, which we don't do yeah. all that often. 
Again, it was trying to think as well, what, what could we do? Because I knew overall, with your twist and pop, depending on how you create them, they're not always an overly long time consuming thing to do. You know, if you were to just cut and assemble them. So I thought, right, how can we start to incorporate a few other techniques? And this is why I thought of this one. And then I thought, well, we still had some of these colors in stock. But instead of doing water colorant with water reactive, why don't we show you how you can do a few different techniques using opaque pigment and quick dry, other than just your plain stamping that you would tend to do. So laying them in, and then following the die cut lines. So use these die cut lines as an accent line, you know that you would find within any of your stamped image. So we can go in here, using them as that guide, if we want to go in and really blend them out again, then you can do. And once again, the reason that we're able to do this, even although they're quick dry and opaque pigment, certainly with a quick dry, is we're using our glass mat or our craft mat, which is a non-porous surface, which means the ink is just going to sit onto your glass mat until you wipe it away. So we can go into there. So I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm really happy with how that's starting to come into life. And then what it looks, I can do... It looks do. good enough to eat from here. Oh, could you imagine? Yeah, I know. Just, uh, you know, when you just really pop your finger in it. Chocolate, Chocolate orange, orange is what uh, Johnny thinks it looks like. Ooh. What is your favourite flavour cupcake, Craig? Uh, well, overall, even just when it comes to cake, I really do like a plain sponge cake with just icing over the top. Like what you would find as a, a normal birthday cake. Mm -hmm. You know, sponge, maybe a little cream and jam. I do like Victoria sponge Adam, but no, yeah, the, the difference between like Victoria a sponge cake. and a celebration right. birthday cake. A bit of jam cake, and yeah. buttercream. Absolutely. Plain sponge. Yeah. I love a fairy cake. Oh, yeah. Or a butterfly cake. Yep. Yep. I or like a chocolate them. fudge cake. Oh, yes, please. Um, Johnny loves an Arctic roll, has been well documented, hasn't it? Craig? He has. He's got his Arctic rolls uh, building in the freezer for today. Oh, exciting night plan for Johnny. It's been a while since I've had an Arctic roll, actually. Uh, Johnny says, come round. Gemma's away. Oh, is oh, he'd even share. For anyone that doesn't know this backstory, I must uh, inform you, uh, Johnny likes to have a few beers on a Friday night and then as a snack, eats a whole Arctic roll which is like a frozen Swiss roll. This goes into the fridge, the lot. Yeah. I know. What a catch. They're quite inexpensive as well, isn't they? <laughs> Wakes up in the morning with the crummies in the bed. Friend of mine, Sleep Eats, Craig. Sleep Eats? Sleep Eats. Woke up, found a block of Cathedral City in his bed the other week. Really? Mm, which is a well-known brand of mature cheddar cheese yeah. here in the UK. Uh, and the other night, uh, three Jaffa cakes. All was that over it? His Only pillow. three? Yeah, three Jaffa cakes found what? squished in his bed. He obviously gets up, sleepwalks in the night, gets yeah. in the kitchen, takes it back to bed with him. <gasps> and then falls asleep on his Jaffa cake. Mm, three Jaffa cakes. So working our way round. Now, all that I'm doing is I'm picking out, still, like I've been doing with these ones here, following the die cut lines, but then what I'm also doing here with these hundreds and thousands, I'm going around, working our way around. Maybe sprinkle some of them on your Arctic roll, Johnny. Work our way around. You want to wake up with a load of hundreds and thousands in the bed, would you? I would, I would be uncomfortable. It's like sand, isn't it? Mm. It'd be... Um, if you, ever ate, ate, if you have ever eaten a, pick, a packet of crisps in bed, you know oh, that's a terrible idea. Craig. Well, you see, I don't. Um, I don't eat in bed. I don't eat in bed no, either. either. I don't allow it. Well, it's only it's only me, but you know, I, I don't. <laughs> done. Um, I don't like. Yeah, I just I don't like that. I'll have a cup of tea in bed. Yes, me too. I don't Love mind a cup, a cup of, of tea. In bed. But no, I don't like eating in bed. How about a bed. biscuit with your cup of tea in bed? Not in bed because no. it still creates crummies. Don't yeah. like crummies. No, I don't like crumbs. No. So uh, just a cup of tea. 
I mean, I, I, well, in saying that, I don't want to contradict myself. Maybe a, a sweet or something that creates no mess. Right. You know, maybe have a little sweet or something. Like but a Jaffa cake? No, 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 like as in a, a, a sweetie sweet, you like know. Like a boiled like sweet? Maybe, no, or like a Haribo sweet or something okay. like that. Or, you something know, like, that's not going to make any crumbs. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Something like that. A Werther's Original or something, yeah. <laughs> Long as there's no crumbs, then I'm fine. I wouldn't have a cupcake. No, definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. Do there is something? Do you know my uh, my definition of a great day off though, uh, Craig, is to get up in the morning really early, about seven o'clock, but then stay in bed till about half nine. Just have multiple cups of tea. Just lay in bed with the oh. iPad, watch a bit, you know, watching videos, watching. Might do news. that tomorrow. It's glorious, honestly. I highly, highly recommend it. Open the curtains, but only just a little bit, so a little bit of light in, and uh, yeah, spend a couple hours in bed in the morning. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might do that tomorrow. Do you know what I like to do as well? I'm, I'm trying to think, who was it here that I said that to? Oh, it was, uh, it was Charlotte. And actually, it was maybe Johnny as well. Every now and again, if, if, I'm off, like if I've been in all week, like I have been this week, then what I'll maybe do, say for instance, tomorrow, for example, I'll still have my alarm set for early in the morning so that it's going to go off. And then you get that initial feeling of, oh, right, I've got to get up. And then you go, no, wait a minute, I can switch it off. Or you do the opposite and do what I did on uh, Wednesday morning, Craig. What's that? Where normally before I come to work, I have quite a, like a broken night's sleep. You know, I, I wake up a lot because I know I've got to get up for work. Yeah. Whereas Tuesday night I went to sleep, didn't wake up once. My alarm went off at eight and I thought, oh gosh, why is that my alarm at eight o'clock for a day off? And then I sort of looked and I went, oh, no, I'm going to work today. So I did the opposite of oh, what no you've done. Way. Yeah. I was laid there, first cup of coffee, contemplating how I was going to spend my day, and then I was out to uh, come to work, which yeah. obviously I was overjoyed about. But uh, I was, you know, I was planning a day off. I was going to go out and get a bacon sandwich or something. Mm-hmm. No, um, fancy of Sherry that. Yates would like to know what an Arctic roll is. I think we might have to get a picture of an Arctic roll, so. Johnny, you know? Uh, okay, Johnny's... Well, I wasn't going to go that far. But we'll get a picture of an Arctic roll because I feel like we are our US viewers... I uh, must call it something else, but we'll, we'll uh, demystify Johnny's Arctic Roll escapades for you towards the end of the show. I bet his camera al album's already full of selfies of him eating an Arctic Roll. Probably. Here we go. So what I'm doing on this one is I've gone back. I want to add a little bit more uh, roundness to this one. So we did go uh, on the base with our pink tulip. And then what I've done now is I'm going back in with some of the Bordeaux. And again, we're going to blend that colour out as well. So we're getting that extra dimension to it. So we're just picking out, following a lot of these die cut lines. Let's just do I guess the die cut lines give you the guide when it comes to the shading, do they, Craig? That's it. Yeah. So use them as if you would follow, you know, the guidelines on the stamps. Yeah. If you were to stamp something out and you get those black guidelines or, you know, there'll be any colour depending on what colour of ink you use, but use those guidelines as a guide. That's what you're doing when it comes to the cupcakes on these ones here. So I'm really happy with how these are uh, turning out. So what I'm going to do is along just the base of the, the icing of the cupcake. I'm going to go in with the Bordeaux again. And then when it comes to these three here, or sorry, four of them, all four, I'm going to start to color in and watercolor with the uh, straw bale as well. So let's go in. And then what we're going to do, the reason I have put in the poppy Centura Pearl, Centura Pearl, where does Centura Pearl come from? classic pen right. is because I want that real hit of brightness in a moment. So we're actually going to use our classic pen to colour in the cherry and also the heart. And you're going to see that difference between watercolour and a real harsh bold of colour within the, the heart and the cherry. Sounds good enough to eat. It's, um, see when it comes to cherries, I had, oh, for years, I'd only tried, you know, the, like, the art, not the artificial ones, but the, the glassy ones. ones. The glassy ones, yeah. Yeah, or the sweets, and I was kind of, oh. 
just the other year, I tried a fresh one for the very first time. Oh, oh my delicious. gosh. Nothing like any of the, the glacé ones or the sweets. They tasted delicious. I don't know if it's so much up here, but when you go down to the south, sort of, certainly in the southeast, sort of Kent kind of way, you, they sort of they sell cherries on the side of the road in like laybys and stuff because it's such a, a fruit producing part of the world, Craig. You just stop and buy yourself a punnet of fresh, delicious cherries that have been picked nearby. It's gorgeous. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's like maybe a little lemonade stand or something as well. Mm. Do, they, do they still do that in America? Let us know. You know, you're a little lemonade stand. Lemonade stand. Delicious. It's maybe, yeah, it's maybe just my idea of a perfect life in films, but... Or maybe you're kind of guided by, you know, all the rules and regulations now. That's just an idea. That That's what I love about going to Thailand, Craig, is that there is not a spare bit of pavement everywhere. Uh, there's just street food stalls yeah. absolutely everywhere. Every single road that you go down, wherever you are, residential area, city centre, it's always something delicious to eat. I've, no, I've never been there, but, you know, I, I, do, uh, I do like um, uh, the kind of like the food network and that. You know, mm. I will sit, chill out and... Uh, watch that every now and again and you do if they've got programs from from there and you can see all the different food vendors and that it's incredible to see it's such a sight isn't there such a good sight there's a place now it's, it's not so much food vendors but it's like markets and that and there's a video going about and it's where it's actually along the lines of a train track rail Oh, uh, that's and in Thailand, Thailand, yeah, Bangkok. Every now and again, when a train comes past... Twice the, a day, I think, the train twice comes a day, through, yeah. They, they pull their, their coverings from their, their store or their hut Yeah, they put the open. awnings back, put all the stuff yep. inside, and then it goes away. And there's only, I think there's only like a, a foot or so either side as it goes through this market, and then pop it back out again. Not awesome. much at all. Mm. It's fascinating to see. It really is. It is just a short video, but it is uh, fascinating to see how and they do that. And they have floating markets as well in uh, Thailand. Floating markets? Yeah, so basically the stalls are a boat. It's a boat selling stuff, and you go up and you float around the market and get the bits and bobs you need, and then off you go again. All right, okay, no, I don't mm. think I've seen that one, no. I don't think I've seen that. I need to have a look at that. What I'm doing is I'm just getting rid of a little bit of that excess colour to give me a little bit more room, because we're going to move on to that yellow one here. So we're going to go into the straw bale. So let's just dry that one off. So once again, let's go in now and we're going to start to colour in with the straw bale on this one. And we're going to coat the colour card. I'm going to get that colour laid down, mix in with water and also the colour. Kind of, kind of primes it slightly. Primes the cardstock with the colour. And then I'm going to do all four of them with that base of colour and water. And then what we can do is we can come back and do what we've done here and start to add a little bit of detail in with our uh, colours of our inks into here. Fabulous, it's looking beautiful. Michelle says, still have lemonade stands just in certain areas, Craig. Right. Can't beat a fresh lemonade. Oh, delicious. You see, I love lemon. You know, I do like that in, in like lemon cake or lemon meringue pie. I do love lemon. The, the um, Tartar, the better. They have, uh, when I was in Naples, uh, on the Amalfi Coast, they have uh, granita, which is like uh, like a lemonade, a really sweet lemonade, and they sort of like freeze it and churn it. Ooh. So it's like a slushy, but <gasps> you can drink it for a straw. Oh, made with like beautiful Italian lemons. Honestly, Craig, it is off the chart. I've had it here, but um, it's no, not a patch on uh, the stuff you get there. Maze Cocoa Patch says, Hi there, I used to teach in Thailand. The floating market and the rail market are wonderful. Thailand is a gem. It really is, isn't it? It's a gorgeous, gorgeous country. It does look it. It looks like such an incredible uh, scenic country. Um, maybe, maybe one day we'll get to visit there. Be nice to see. Here we go. The... Um, I was, I was thinking there a minute ago, I was trying to think of the word, but I can't. You'll know what I mean, Joe. Mm. Uh, when you were on about the, the lemon there, mm -hmm. be, is it a bit like as well, you know, not quite ice cream, what's it, not gelato? You know, like the... Sorbet. Uh, a sorbet, mm. that's it. Must be a bit like that bit as like well, that, is it? A drinkable one, yeah. A drinkable so one, like yeah. Sorbet in liquid form, frozen liquid form, delicious. Yeah. <sighs> does sound nice. Just does sound nice. Yeah, always tartar the better with the, the lemon. It's um, my favourite dessert, apart from a birthday cake, 
you know, the sponge cake. But uh, my favourite dessert is lemon meringue pie. You know what they say, Craig, don't you? When life gives you lemons, go to the pub. That's not how the saying goes. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I think it's so pub. good. Have a gin and tonic, pop the lemon in. That's what I'll be having tonight when I get in. Nice little gin and tonic. Uh, Terry says we do have lemonade stands and farm stands along the road. Michigan has lots of fruits uh, like peaches and blueberries. Iowa has a lot of sweet corn stands. Ohio, there are a lot of farm stands. There's one down the road, a couple of blocks that sells seasonal plants, flowers, vegetables and sweet corn, fruits, pumpkins and so much more. Uh, they work on honour system. Oh, that's good. So you just sort of take what you want and then, uh, you know, you just uh, sort that's of That's really nice, isn't uh, it? Yeah. yeah, fabulous. That's a really nice one. There's, um, a f well, we've got a couple of farms back home in Scotland where, uh, you know, they have um, hens that lay, or chickens that lay eggs and that. Apparently, I've so I remember seeing a picture from around here somewhere, Craig, where there's like a, an egg thing, where you sort of put the coins in, or put your money in, and you, it opens up and you take the eggs out. It's like a sort of big egg vending machine, basically, on the side of the road, honestly. Yeah. Um, and in the Netherlands, they have something called Fibo, Craig, which is basically a restaurant a takeaway you walk, restaurant that you walk into, and it's just a wall of hatches, and you put the right, it's all heated, you put the right amount of money in, and then the door opens, and you just take the food that's inside. It's got like burgers, chicken nuggets, um, all sorts of things. Yeah, got them in Amsterdam, they're called Fibo. They're uh -huh. awesome. They're, I don't know if it's still here, because obviously I've not, I've not been home for, um, well, apart from Christmas time, but well over a year now so in Dundee on one of the shopping centres the Overgate they did have it was like a vending machine but it was local um, potatoes nice uh, not huge big sacks but relatively small sacks of local potatoes and then what you used to do like a vending machine you put your money in whatever one you opened it up and you could take out the potatoes oh. it was very random when I seen it but yeah uh -huh. I love an obscure vending machine very, very random. Uh, all the vending machines in the supermarkets, uh, not supermarket, in the shopping centre near me, Craig, in town, uh, they were um, vending machines for things like cold drinks and stuff. Now they're all face mask vending machines, I realised when I went in the other day. Really? Change towards face mask, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the new vending machine we've got here in the office? No. Contactless one. Oh, that is dangerous. Yeah. Did you so know I won't be going around the office asking everyone for change then anymore to get a, you know to get something sneaky out of the vending machine. Did Johnny we used to beg each other for change, didn't we? Did it? Yeah. Um, well, now they've got this where you can use your card. Um, That's dangerous. If you didn't know about that, you'll you'll not heard the story from this morning then. No, did you? I won't have, but I do want to. Uh, Johnny, let me know if I'm r saying this wrong. But where we have like our staff canteen, but we have a vending machine as well. And we had many, you know, from the other, what, a year or so, over a year ago, when Sarah done a video where we had a reception bit all redone up and mm. we had walls, uh, new walls and all that built in and obviously had the mezzanine. But what they didn't obviously take into account is obviously when that vending machine originally went in, was put in maybe about five years ago. Well, since then, they've built the new walls and the doors aren't big oh. enough to get oh, the no. vending machines out. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. So they can't get the vending machine out? They got it out. Eek. I think they've had to take it apart to actually get it oh out. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Yep. Whoops. Oh, dear. I know. That's hilarious. We could just keep it as like an ornamental one, maybe. I uh, love all these bits of info from around the world. Denise says, uh, very entertaining. Ah, oh, that's nice, Denise. Kelly says, I am paper piecing mine, but I love the painting that Craig is doing. I definitely need to get those ink pads. Well, you're in luck. They are available to you on the show. Pop yourself over to the website, click the uh, Shop Show button, uh, and you will be able to grab them. I think that's uh, a really good thing uh, to say there and pick up on. It's, it's good that, yes, we're able to take this time within a craft along, but something like this, we really are just having a normal chat with um, between myself and Joe, obviously, Adam and Johnny and you guys at home and just knowing and learning all these different things. Cathy as well, you know, she's uh, crafting along and uh, we're going to just chat to her just shortly because I've not got much more of this bit to do. So, uh, yeah, the random thing, we know that Joe does uh, like a fairy cake, I like my lemon meringue pie, there are lots of things. Let us know, anything random about yourselves. Tell us your random facts, that would be a good yeah. one, wouldn't it, Craig? Any uh, facts TV? about vending machines? Um, more people are killed by vending machines in a year than are by great white, than are by sharks, I know that fact. I don't, don't ask me how I know about that. That's brilliant, really. Yeah. There you go. That's just blown my mind. 
totally blown my mind, that one. <gasps> they have vending machines for fish bait in Minnesota, Craig. Sorry, Joe. Vending machines for fish bait in uh, Minnesota, says uh, Susan. Fish bait? Yeah. Ah. There's a random vending machine on the street near my flat, Craig. And every time I drive out, as I drive up, it's like a block over from me, basically. It's like behind like a sort of cage thing. It all looks very strange. But people are always like crowding around, seeing what's in it. I need to stop and have a look what's in it. You must do. Me. Yeah, you must mm. do. There is uh, one is as well now, yet again, with everything going on, it's been a while since I've been through at the Metro Centre in Newcastle. But there was one one of the entrance bits where it's just absolutely jam-packed full of uh, girls' uh, fake eyelashes. Wowzers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on a vendor machine. Yep. It's probably been changed to uh, fa face masks and that probably. But. Mm. So here we go. So we can see really, really chuffed with how this is coming along, uh, Joe. Picking in. I'm just going to pick this last few bits into here. So depending on the design of the cupcake base, I'm shading them in slightly different ways. These ones, I've kind of done it so that we've got the shading towards the top and the bottom. This one, we've started to work from our left to the right. This one also from left to right, but what we've done is I've started to follow around some of the circle apertures. And this one, I've chosen to kind of use it, the stripes as a guide to go down. And then what we'll do is I'm going to go in because even all these extra detailed die cut bits of the, the wafer as well as the cherry and the heart, they've got little embossed detail bits. So let me just add a tiny little bit more. What I am doing, I don't know if you've noticed, every now and again when I go to put my ink onto my glass mat, I'm making sure I'm not putting it into a wet bit. Because what I don't want to do, Joe, is anything that's water onto there, I don't want to then uh, saturate my ink pad. Okay. So I'm just making sure that I'm going to pop it onto a dry bit. In case you wonder why I keep wiping my glass mat with my hand, it's to make sure that it's not wet. And then I'm just doing this last little bit into here. Maze Cocoa Patch says apparently Japan leads the world in food vending machines. In Japan, the truck stops have a, a lot of vending machines with all kinds of food, hot and cold, Craig. Uh, when I was in Sidges, which is just south of Barcelona, Craig, in Spain, they do have a machine, a big vending machine. Don't ask me how it does it, but it makes and cooks a pizza for you. No way, really? Yeah. Put your money in, you press the button, use a contactless, and then basically it like, takes the dough, squishes it down, puts a topping on and then like puts it in this oven thing and then it drops out. Yeah, like in a box. Mm -hmm. it's, it was unbelievable. Ready to eat? Yes, Johnny. <laughs> what are you going to do? Look at it. <laughs> Take it home, put it on the mantelpiece. <laughs> oh, you're just brilliant, Joe. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, dear. Good comeback, though. Good comeback. There we go. So now I've gone in with the watercolours. Now I'm going in with my poppy, DR2, and we're colouring in the love heart here. There's a couple of other little love hearts on our cupcake, so we've coloured them in. So we can go in and finish this off. Now I'm going in direct with this one colour. Even though, although they're tiny little hearts and then a cherry, if you want to do your three-tone blend, you can, but I am just doing it with the one. And I'm going to make sure I've got a good basis of this one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here, I'm just going to neaten off that love heart that I've done there. A monkey head bonkers loves your colour choice, Craig. Well, I love monkey head bonkers name. Absolutely. Is that YouTube or Facebook? That's YouTube. It must be YouTube, a YouTube handle. That's a good, I, I love a lot of the names on YouTube. Some funny ones, some weird ones, but good ones all the same. There we go. So I'm following that top outline of the cherry into here. And that, I am pretty, I am, not only am I chuffed with that, I am over the moon with how that has uh, turned out. Awesome. Really Love pleased with that one. That. 
looks absolutely brilliant. Should we take a slight pause there then, Let's Craig? Do that. Is that all right? That's absolutely I'm sure fine. everyone is doing well, but I just want to recap and just remind you that if you don't yet have uh, if you don't yet have these uh, products, and it's not too late, you're going to be able to watch this back anytime you like. Sharon Sweeney says, I saw some of those machines recently on a show called Modern Marvels. They also have one that will make hamburgers as well. They really do. Denise says, how long did it take to make the pizza? I think it was about six or seven minutes, Denise, to make it and cook it. So uh, it, was, it was pretty fast. It really, really was. Now, I'll run back through what you are getting. If you want to go for the collection, as I said, it's not too late. You can order these. Ordering the whole collection will get you the best value for money. You can get any two of these, though, for £30 or $35. Just make sure you also include that mechanism die in there, which is £7.99 in the UK or £9.95 in the US. You've got the cupcakes, which are the ones that Craig was using just here. We also then have the balloons. Really nice, versatile designs in here, which is fantastic. The presents... Nice aperture on these as well. So if you do want to pop something behind them, like a background in the background or uh, some glitter card or some mirror card, you can. You've got your hearts in here. Then the frames as well. So you've got the oval frames. You also then have the regular frames in there too. £90 or $105, uh, depending on where you are shopping. Uh, right, I want to show you the ink pads. I've got two different collections for you. Let's do the pigment ones first. In the pigment ones, uh, you will receive Bordeaux. You'll also get in here uh, the pink tulip too. And you're going to get the crushed velvet. So Bordeaux, pink tulip, and the crushed velvet there for you. I've also then got the quick dries. And in the quick dry, you get the straw bale. You also get the lemon tonic. And you're going to receive the orange here. Uh, as well. Should we check in with Kathy and see uh, how she's getting on there in Florida? Uh, right, let's cross back to Florida. Kathy, how's it going? I just about finished. Oh, oh wow, time. Craig, look at that. Oh, that's even better than mine. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Greg, Craig is a good teacher. He is oh, indeed. You, Kathy. What did you use yeah. to create yours, Kathy? I used, um, let's see, I had, I didn't have orange, so I used honey pot. And Brilliant. I didn't have Bordeaux, so I used uh, plum jam. Well, beautiful. Awesome. I think you've yeah. absolutely nailed that, Kathy. They look awesome. Uh, and I'll check in with you again after Craig's next step, if that's all right. Okay. Speak I'll soon. Be here. Bye bye. Uh, right then, Craig, I think let me just double check the comments, make sure everyone is up to date. It appears they are. So if you're ready, I think everyone else is, Craig. Go for it then. Let's do that. And then what it's also done is it's just given your cardstock enough time to dry before we move on to the next bit. So what we can do is let's go and bring our scoreboard in for the time being. And then what we can do is if we bring in our bases of our cupcakes, and then we're going to come in here and we're going to use our tacky glue for this one here. You can use your dry adhesives if you want, but when it comes to anything like this, the mechanism, I do, or not the mechanism, but the actual uh, workings of the cupcake, because this is what's going to be folded and then popped in the middle, I do want to make it really strong and robust by using our tacky glue. So I'm going to go in over the top, and I'm going to spend that little bit of time just making sure that I go in between all these bits. If you've got your sprays, they would work as well, Joe, if you want, your permanent adhesive sprays. Lots of love for Kathy's colouring in the comments. That's smart, isn't it? Really, really smart. I love the way that she's uh, done that shading, but then also uh, used a different uh, colours than what I've done because she didn't have them. Shows how well that the Plum Jam also works in comparison to the Bordeaux, but then also using the was that honey pot did uh, Kathy say she used because I used the straw bale I think she said or the honey pot either way goes to show how you can use different ones if you want so what we can do is I'm just popping my adhesive onto the back and I'm just working my way all the way around making sure that I get a nice coverage of the tacky glue we can work in here to say as well, you could be using, uh, if you wanted to, the Hunky Dory sticky mitts that we had on the show yesterday, oh, yeah. or our own self-adhesive double-sided sheets. They'll absolutely work. The only thing, just to bear in mind, is that will add extra thickness 
onto your actual design that you've die cut. So it uh, will sometimes just need an extra bit of uh, pliability when you come to construct it, to move it back and forwards, just so that you get that movement, that slick movement. But they will still work if that's what you want to use instead. Just uh, to repeat the ink pad colours, you use straw bale, lemon tonic and orange, Craig. That was right, wasn't it? It was as well. I, um, I did, that was it. Yep, sorry Joe, yeah, Bordeaux, straw bale, pink, tulip and orange, yeah. Did you say that? No. <laughs> but what Craig said. <laughs> but then, you know, as I just picked up on there, Cathy showed how well it works if you use a few different ones as well. It does indeed, yes. So you can colour it up exactly as you wish. I hope that helps, Patty. Here we go. And then what we can do is pop it straight over the top because we're going to set that into place and then Joe could I be a pain yep and just uh just if it's all right Johnny just for a moment can we go back to you for one minute it's just my microphone's really sticking up yeah is it jabbing, you, my, in the, is it jabbing you in the throat <laughs> it's in my, my in my neck and it's oh. I don't want it to cause a nuisance for you guys no at worries. home thank you let's take Craig's mic out hi uh, yeah, oh, you want me to talk? Sorry, I thought you just waited to look at me for a moment. Oh, you want me to do something? What do you want me to do? Uh, oh, <laughs> let's go over the thing, is uh, Adam's <laughs> suggestion. Let's go back over the two ink pad collections that we've got, because we've actually got quick dry ones and we've got opaque pigment ones. So the quick dry ones that we have available for you are the straw bale, <laughs> the lemon tonic. Let me just show that one again. The straw bale which is this one just here, the lemon tonic <laughs> and the orange. You should have heard the absolute panic in Adam's voice then. Uh, we've also got the pink tulip in here for you. You've got the crushed velvet and you've got the Bordeaux in there as well. I was just winding them up next door. 1272 or 1772 if you want to go for those. Are you affixed that over there, Craig? I am. Awesome. I am. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for that. There we go. It's just rather sticking into my neck. I could have gone a bit longer, but I was conscious that maybe every time I was chatting or swallowing, you were maybe going to hear uh, weird uh, clunk noises. So I thought we better just get that sorted. Here we are. Do you know what it is as well? It's usually any of my shirts that I have, I have the buttons down the front. It's not often I have a top where it's right at my neck. So um, yeah, just at the top there. Anyway, there we go. So we're nicely pressed down and that uh, little bit of time to sort my microphone also gives it that bit of time to dry as well. Brilliant. And we are all good to, do, uh, good to go and sorted. So what we're also going to do now, now at this point you might find it a little bit hard to see because we've caught, gone over the top and started to do the colouring, but right down the centre of the cupcakes, there is a, there, or there was a slight score line. So all that I'm going to do is into the little tip that's into here. Yep. Now, I know it looks like I'm following that black line, but I want you to see just on this bit here, that's the center point where there's that tip. So what we're going to do is we're going to score down into there. And you just be a little bit careful because you've got these different uh, multitude of layers. And then the watercolour card has become a little bit more robust because we've gone in with water and then it's dried out, so it's extra strong now. So there we go. Some, and some people think it can weaken your cardstock, and it can when it's wet, mm. but then once it's dry, it really makes it a bit stronger. So that's the middle. Then into the quarter here, we've got this quarter bit. Here. And then what we're going to do is just go down. We're meeting them ones up as well. So you're just following the score lines that are already in there, are you, Craig? Yeah, awesome. yeah. So they're already there. The only difference, or I'm saying the only difference, the only thing at the moment is because we've gone over with all the watercolours, might make it that little bit harder to see. Okay. But all that we're doing is right within the middle, we've scored there, down in this quarter here, and then we're going to do it the same down into here. So we're going to follow that initial score line. And the score line is on your die cut design. It won't necessarily show up on this back panel. It's where you've done the die cut of the cupcakes 
or the balloons or the hearts, depending on which ones you're using. So once we've given them a good, fair light, but multiple time emboss, we can set that into place. Then what we can do is we can fold this one back on itself, and then this one we can fold in on itself, and then this one we can also fold in on itself. So we can then press that. If you want to give that a little bit of a burnish, you can. We're going to do the same here, and then we can do the same here. So when it folds, do they all fold in together facing each other, Craig? That's right, Like yeah. that, awesome. They all end up folding, concertina effect, into place here. So I can set that one to the side just for a second. Then what we can do is if we bring back in our little mechanism that we've got here, what you can do as well, if you do find it easier to come back along and just accent these score lines, then you can do. So I'm going to do just that. I'm already folding the lines that are already there. So we're going to score down and then I am going to follow this line. And this is why, in case anyone wonders, this is why uh, many of our scoreboards, we've actually drawn a black line down ours. Fantastic. And that just means that when we come to do score lines to meet up or join up, what we can do, for instance, just, oh, there's one on both sides. <laughs> Go figure. So let's, let's ignore that black line. So if we were trying to match this one, you, sometimes it's harder to work out which yeah, line is. you need to yeah. follow down. So whereas if you then go in, so I know there's the line there, I'm just looking for the emboss line here and here, I know it's matching up and we can go straight down. So we've done down the centre and then a little X. As I say, the score lines are already there, we're just doing that just to enhance them that little bit more. And then what we're then going to do now is we can then start to, uh, start to fold these into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this one over. So we're just folding it over and really what we're doing is we're manipulating all of the score lines. So then we can fold this on itself. So fold them forward and back. Because what you're wanting, this is all about movement. So when we come to construct it, we want to have all the fibres of the cardstock that are really, really stretched to the point that you're going to have that nice, smooth, slick pop, twist and pop action. And not then to be confused with the bend and snap. We've got not the bend and snap. No, that's very totally different. different. Very, very different. Yeah, my twist and pop is totally different to Joe's bend and snap. It really is. I can't bend and snap in this shirt today, I'm afraid, Craig. Can you not? No. So I think I'd bend and snap the buttons off. Yeah, you don't want that, do you? No. You don't want that. Then what we can do is now that we've got that movement within them, so what you can do is if you then take these two ends or these two sides and start to pull them together, and then what happens is it'll start to create a little bit of a teepee top up into here. So it's either a teepee top or maybe a little house. So if I open that up again so it's flat, so if we just go to grab each corner and pull them together, you're going to get that little bit of a teepee top that we can see into here. So what I can do now that we've got that bit, I'm going to set that to the side. We're going to then decorate the inside of our card first of all, before we come and incorporate our little workings. So what we can do for this one, if we go back to our card layers that we've already cut, so we've got our pattern and we've also got our black layers. So you'll see the way that we've cut them, they're going to be perfect mats and layers with a little bit of a white border all the way around. So you can bring in your tape runner if you choose to use that. I'm going to use my tacky glue simply because I've already got it out from using the mechanism. And then we're going to mat and layer one onto our black we're going to do exactly the same with the second one. And then what we'll do is we'll put one on the inside, one on the top, and then maybe just give you a second or two just to catch up if need be. So we're working awesome. our way around. Evelyn would like to see you uh, just repeat the instructions. After you've done, Craig, of course, yeah. repeat the instructions on the folding of the cupcakes again, if that's okay. No problem whatsoever. We shall Anyone else that. that's got any questions, anything they're struggling with, uh, now is the perfect time uh, to get any questions into me whilst we take this next break and then I'll be able to pop them over to Craig again and he'll be able to answer those for you, which is great. Um, 
It was stamping card for the mechanism. Is that correct? Asked Pamela. I, I've used stamping card. It was for the indeed, mechanism. Pamela. Yep. Yes. And stamping card is a 300 GSM, if I'm not mistaken, Craig. That's right. Yeah. And it the is. watercolor. What's a GSM on the watercolor card? Sort of, do you know off the top of your head? Is it 310? Now, our Centura Pearls 310. 310. Is it all... 350? Ooh, Johnny's going to find he's out. He's going to find us. out. I can hear this, him yeah. beavering away in the background. All our cardstock behind here, it gets put in little folders behind here, so it's mm. not in its original packaging. It's 300 as well. So you were right, yeah. Yeah, most of our card is either round about the 300 or 310 GSM. Because our craft card is 300, our black's 300, and then, yeah, our Centura Apparel range is, of course, uh, 310. So what I'm doing with this one is I'm going to do it so that I've got my stripes going from left to right. If you want to have it so it's going in the other direction, again, that is something that's completely up to yourself. So let's mat and layer that one in, and then we can then mat and layer this one in. And then what I will do, Joe, if you think it's all right, I'll show you the folding of that cupcake again. Yes, please. That'd and then wonderful. we'll give you that break in case anyone needs to fold their cupcake uh, into the way it needs to go. Brilliant. So let's bring this one in here. So that'll be our inside layers done. So we can set that one to the side. So if we come back into our cupcake now, so I'm going to slightly flatten this so I can explain it again. So we've got our cupcake. So really think of it as a halfway point, the, a third way point, and then your, uh, what's that? Uh, a th halfway, a third. Half, a, a quarter, half, and Qu three quarters. That's it, yeah. Yeah, get my thirds and quarters and halves and all that mixed up. So halfway down, you will find uh, you'll have your slight score line on with your die cup. However, because we've come along and done a little bit of watercolouring, what you'll find is it's maybe just disappeared slightly. So what you can do is if you do find your score line, just enhance that a little bit more if you so wish using your score tool. So what we are doing within that middle bit, so give it a, light, a nice extra score if you need be, and we're going to fold that back on itself. Then what we've done is exactly the same on this quarter part here. So we've gone in, follow the score line that's in place as well. And then, so that middle one, we are doing a mountain fold because it's sticking up. This one, we're doing a valley fold because it's sticking downwards. And then we're going to do the same on this end one. So while we're up above, if I show you, we're left with like a, a W effect. Nice. You can see on there. So it's folded up folded down, folded down, and we've got that concertina effect here. In other words, the, another way to think of it is pretty much in between each cupcake is where you've got your score line on each of these ones. So I think what we can do is uh, in a moment or two, anyone that needs to get caught up, then you can do. So when we come back to me, what we'll have is we will have our card blank that we've done, we'll have our cupcakes ready to go, and we've also got our mechanism as well that's ready to go at the same time. Brilliant. Well, why don't we just give you a couple of minutes to get caught up. Uh, whilst uh, you uh, finish off your last little bits and bob, uh, we'll drop in with Kathy again in a few minutes. But before we do that, let's share with you all the fantastic details of Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire, our free loyalty club. As a member of the club, you can save up to 20% every time you shop with us. For every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to Silver Membership, where you'll get 10% discount, plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a Gold Member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order, and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. 
when you reach 1500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends, to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. Become a member of our club today. All the fantastic details there, of course, of Club Inspire, which is absolutely awesome. Shall we go and uh, shall we go and see how Kathy's getting on uh, across in Florida, uh, which is awesome. Sarah Brown says she's really enjoying the show, uh, still watching uh, and awake, and it's after 1 a.m. Uh, oh, Sarah, it is late there. I hope it's not too chilly. It's warming up here, you see, Craig, and cooling down now uh, in uh, Australia. Uh, let's pop and see Kathy and see how she's getting on. Kathy, how are you uh, following so far? Doing fine, have all my components all ready to go. Oh, it's all looking fabulous, Kathy, if I may yes. say so. That Different is awesome, colors. Craig. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that design you've used. Brilliant. Okay, then, Kathy, we'll push on with this last step. Uh, and I am so excited to see what you've created uh, yeah. at the end. So we'll drop back in on you very, very shortly. Uh, but yes, I think everyone, judging by the comments, Craig, um, is all caught up. June says, I love how Craig explains everything and then repeats so you know exactly what to do. Uh, brilliant, Craig, over to you. Okay, doc, so let's go for it then. So what we're going to do is let's bring that mechanism that we have already folded in half. Anyone that needs to, just in case you need to once more, what we've done is we made sure we fold and bur burnished all these edges, go to pinch the end, and you're going to left with a little triangle with our two little legs at each side. So what we can do is let's go in with our tacky glue again. And I know I say this all the time, Joe, but anything that is a, a kinetic card or a working card or concept card, I would use the tacky glue because it's going to be really nice and strong once it's dried into place. So what we can do is pop our glue onto each side, so onto each triangle. Then we're going to come in. Now, if you want to do a little pencil line on the halfway point, you can do. I'm going to work it in just with my eye on this one Is here. it important that it's bang on the centre point, Craig? So you want to have it within that centre line. So it doesn't need to be bang on the centre of your card. Like, you know, right. you might want to have it further down or but further up. it has to be on up. the fold. It needs to be on the fold, though, for the workings to pop in and out and twist. So I can press that one in here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that one over. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold that down just for a second or two. And I'm going to apply, apply a little bit of pressure just so that that glue is going to grab. Because it's a wet glue, we've got to start doing the mechanism straight away. What's mm. going to do is just going to tear away from the cardstock. So I'm making sure I've got a nice bit of pressure. And then you can see how that starts to work there. Fantastic. So you've got that movement. But once again, let's just, just for extra protection, let's just press a little bit more, pop it in. If you don't want to use a wet glue, I would then suggest you use your red liner tape. But here we go. So then they are kind of happy enough with that one now. So what we can then do is I'm then going to come in with my cupcake. So I'm going to keep it so it's folded over. Now, some of you might find it easier to apply your cupcake in with the working before you pop it in. Some of you prefer and find it easier to do it this way. It's kind of, you know, like six and a half a dozen, whatever you feel more comfortable doing. So what we can do as well is when we come in, so I'm going to then slot this one in like so. So this is where, uh, really, for you to see, it'd probably be easier working the, uh, the legs of the mechanism in, first of all. But you know what? We've stuck it in now, so let's go for it. So what I'm going to do on this one, so on this part here, and then also on, so let's just work it in here so we can see. So if I pop that one in here. So on, let me get it right for you to see. So there we go. So what you're wanting to do, it's actually on this bottom bit here and on this bit here. So bottom left and then top right, what we're going to do is we're going to pop some of our glue on. So we're going to do it into the corner. We don't want to do it all the way along. We just want to make sure we've got enough within the corner here. And then what we can do is we can then come into place here. I'm doing that little bit into the corner. So let's come back in with our cupcake again. So what I'm doing, the way I'm folding it is so we've got our left-hand side cupcake to the top here. 
And then if I go to start to close it again, and I'm going to tuck it in. So if I go this way, I really ideally, I should have done it the other way around for you to see when we're live. But you know what, we're going to tuck it in. So we've got our mechanism on the bottom of our cupcake. And then that's going to go over the same on the reverse side. Awesome. So I'm going to fold it in. Do you need to get it central within those two legs, really, ideally, Craig? Ideally, yeah. yeah. Ideally, you do, so that it's going to get that working. So basically, the way it's going to be, I'm going to hold that for a second, is you're going to have your leg on that left-hand side of the base cupcake. So what I'm going to do is press, and then we're going to let that glue grab. So as that lets it grab. So what you'll be able to see is, we'll go in that way. So we've got one leg on one side. And then if I turn it onto the other one, like, like I said, I know awesome. I should have one done this One side on the base way. and one side on the top. Yeah, that's the way that we're doing it. Using our glue to stick this one down. And then when we go to open it up. Oh, fabulous. Look at we've that. We've got our twist and we've got our pop. This is why as well we really made sure that we fold, scored and burnished that worker die really, really well. Because look at that free flow and movement. It's very smooth, isn't it? Very smooth. And that's all about the workings of that mechanism. So we're going back and forwards on that one there. So we can And I guess going. if you, if it was sticking or hitting a little bit, Craig, is that maybe because you've got the cupcake pushed too far back towards the um, fold when you've stuck it down? That's right. So you want to try and get the cupcake attached, but not at the fold mark exactly, when you put it in. Yeah, Brilliant. That's it, I exactly. tried to explain that and I, I actually I butchered it, but you knew what I was trying to say in my head, didn't you? I, I know what you're trying to say and hopefully I know that I've showed you kind of the reverse. This is what I would do when I'm doing it at home. Sometimes you need to think when it's a craft along, okay, maybe that's how I would do it when I'm at home, but how's the best way to show you guys at home? I would have done it the other way to show you all, but hopefully all that you're doing is you're just making sure that you slot the cupcake in or the balloon, whatever one that you're doing, and then you're going to have one leg on the top left, and then the other leg is going to be stuck under that bottom cupcake. That's then going to give you your mechanism that we can see Brilliant. into place here. Love that. So that is that one. Should we just carry on with the decoration of the front? Yeah, we'll I do think that so. right now. Brilliant. Let's go for it. So what I've also done is I've taken uh, a piece of the pattern paper also from that same uh, paper pad collection that we've got here. So what I can do there is bring that one in and then I'm also going to bring in another piece of black cardstock. So let's bring in our guillotine once more. Let's bring it in. Now what I'm going to do is my black layer of cardstock, we're going to do that with the same with the other ones. So that what I'm saying, I can't even remember off the top of my head now, what was that? That was five, five and a half by five and a half inches. So we can do it five and a half by five and a half. We're going to come into our pattern paper. So this one we can do five and a quarter by five and a quarter because we're wanting that decoration. So let's move that one out of the way. So there's our top layers that's going to be for our card blank. Then what I'm also going to do is I'm bringing in some ribbon that I've got. So we've got some ribbon here. We've also taken some that's from our organza ribbon. And then I've got some lovely little embellishments that were all good to go. So what we can do is we can start to wrap this one around before we actually assemble the main layer. So let's do our mats and layers onto our black. So I'm going to go around here. So if I layer this one on to place, then what I'm going to do is I've got a shorter bit of ribbon, this bit here. That's going to wrap around the top. So for this one, I will go and use my tape runner. So I'm going to pop a little bit at the top here, here, and then we can wrap this one around. So let's pop this one. Let's get it the right way. We're going to fold it around into place. I'm going to do this side as well. So what we can do is fold it over. Then I'm going to go in now, and then we can go in. I'm going to pop extra tape over the top. And because I've done all my layers with the tacky glue, I'm just going to do this one as well. Although I could easily enough done it with the tape runner. 
So that's uh, Dieta saying that sparkle glitter pens would add a nice touch to those cupcakes. They, they would they, really no look nice, wouldn't they? How good would they look? Maybe even a little bit of glitter. Nice. You know? So yeah, either sparkle or glitter. You've got so many different ways in which you can use them. So let's pop our layer into place. Then what we can do is bring in another piece of that ribbon. And I thought, let's wait until we're live so that we can do this, because so many always ask about how to do a bow. So I've got our long ribbon. So what I'm doing is round my two fingers, going to create our little ears. What I'm going to do is fold that one over. So we're creating our cross. And then we're going to tuck this one under and we're going to pull it through. So if we pull that one through, and then what we can do is I'm going to pop my thumbs into here and we can start to maneuver it and manipulate it to get it to the bow shape that we need. So there's that one. And then let's trim the edges using my scissors. And what I've also done, Joe, but just within my stash at home, I had this little kind of like phone uh, bling gem. So I thought we'll bring that one in because we can decorate our card with that one. Then what we can do, once again, let's, I've got this little bit of ribbon. I was being really quite sparing on this ribbon here. I'm going to do the same. We're going to turn it around, create our little bow. And then as we bring it in, fold it in, and then we're going to tighten that. That can sit on top of the next, or that first one that we've just done. Pull the little hoops, get the ribbon, get the bow into place where you need it to go. Work it in. Take your time. And then there is our second one. So we've got a mix of organza and a mix of satin. So let's snip. And then snip. So there's a couple of our layers here. So there's that really fancy gem that I've brought in from home. And I've got a couple of petals as well taken one of the die cut sentiments so let's move that to the side so what we can do is i'm going to pop pad onto the back here so if i pop that one in there and then i just want to make sure i've got all of that nice happy birthday sentiment so what i've done here and then what i've also done joe see these two little black Dot. You know the hole punches that you get for your, your uh, folders, your files? What I've done is I've just punched a couple of black holes and stuck that on a little bit of uh, our adhesive. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cover that little hole that's on that tag there. And then what we can do is do another one for the other side here. And then use it. Let's use our hot glue for this one. We can come in and then we're going to do this one here with the glue gun. And then I'm going to set that one there. I'm going to do this one here. And then what we can do is bring in a little diamond or whatever you, you've got that you're going to use into the middle here. Holding it for a second. At this point, you could be using your glue gel if you want. It just means you'll need to just let that set uh, for a little while. But once I've got that one, let's go in with a couple of these finished gems or petals that we're using. We're working our way in. So we're using our pokey tool to pop these in. So we can either go at the front or what we can then do is if you want to come into the middle and then we can start to do a little bit of decoration into here. So let's do one there I'm going to do one up into here and also within this set what I've done is we've got a little heart that I had within my stash so I'm going to set that one into the middle and then that is all that I'm going to do to finish our twist and pop card with our cupcake so we've got our card so it looks really nice on the front, but then it's all about the inside of your twist and pop. Oh, that's gorgeous. And we've done all of that watercolour in ourselves using those ink pads and using our water. There we go.
Beautiful. From scratch. What a fantastic craft along that has been, Craig. Oh, hello. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Bye. Uh, that, <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that was it. Poof, end. Gone. <laughs> Thanks for the craft along. See you. Um, <laughs> uh, no, remember, if you do want to uh, partake in that craft along, you don't have the bits and bobs you need, don't worry. You can watch this back any time you like. Uh, because the products are available right now in the show. I'll just quickly run back through the deal that we've got. Now you can get them individually. Individually they are $17.99 each or $19.95. Any two of them for £30 or $35. If you want to have the whole collection then you can. That represents the best value for money. If you are going for the individuals or the two four, make sure you're adding the mechanism into your basket as well. Now what you've got in here is the cupcakes. This is one that you've just seen Craig using a moment ago. You've also got the balloons in here too. This one here is your presence, as you can see, which is awesome. Then we have the hearts there. You've then got this one just here, which is your oval frames. And last but by no means least, you've got your regular frames there as well. £90 or $105 becomes £72 or $84, meaning uh, a platinum member saving uh, almost £45 or dollars wherever they are shopping, which is absolutely awesome. Now is your chance as well to send in uh, your pictures. If you've been crafting along in real time, send in the pictures of your craft along. Uh, send them to us at studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk is where they need to go. Details there bloop, along the bottom of your screen. If you are a little bit behind, if you don't think you're going to get finished in the next sort of 10 minutes or so, don't worry, you can hang on to those pictures and send them to Craig and I during our Colour Me Happy show, which is coming up this evening at 7pm here in the UK, 2pm Eastern Time, 11am Pacific Time, which will be awesome. So you'll be able to join us for them as well. Now, let's drop back in on Cathy and see how she's getting on there uh, across in Florida. How's it going, Cathy? Just about finished. Whoa, look at that. Oh, how awesome. Oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah, that is absolutely it. Incredible, Kathy. Did you enjoy putting it together? Yes, I did. It was a lot of fun. Oh. I really liked using the pigment paint uh, pads to paint with. That was nice. Ah, is it the first time you've done that? Yes, it is. Well, you would never know, Craig, would no, you? No, you wouldn't. You would not know that, uh, Kathy. That is so, so smart between the mechanism, the way that it looks, and then, yeah, absolutely the colouring that you've done. Thank you so much for doing that with us. That's brilliant. Thank absolutely you. Great. It was fun. Great. How long have you, uh, how long have you been crafting for, Kathy? Uh, probably my entire life. Oh, wow. I started making I started making cards though about four or five years ago, and my sister got me involved with Crafters uh, TV during the pandemic, and that's when I really started doing this. Oh, awesome! Well, you'd never yeah. know. So, tell me about the crafts that you did before card making. I'm also a quilter. Oh. I've done a lot of quilting and uh, and things like that. Um, I can crochet and knit, and you know, my mom did all these things, so this is what I've done. It's oh. been a lot of fun now. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you've uh, discovered card making as well. Uh, Kathy, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, have Thank you enjoyed you. it? What would you say to anyone else about coming on the show? Has it been a fun experience? Oh, it's a, it's a lot of fun and it's great to get to meet you guys since we watch you all the time. So it's really oh. nice to get to see who we actually can hear on the TV all the time. Yeah, well, it's so lovely uh, to have you uh, with us as well, Kathy. Uh, from all of us uh, here at Crafters TV, a massive thank you. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again at some point in the future. I hope so. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Take care, Bye. Kathy. Bye. Bye. Oh, so lovely to have oh, Kathy so join us. She really is. And also a beautiful, beautiful creation there as well. Uh, Craig, Karen says, I love how Craig is doing double bows. Jenny says, beautiful card. Carol loves it. Pam saying, fantastic. Winnebeth, beautiful card. Uh, Barbara says, thanks for all the explanation. A lot of love for Kathy's creation there as well, from yep. Laura and also from Susie T. Uh, and Deborah saying, great card, Kathy. I'd never have believed that was your first time painting with those pigment ink pads. Uh, right, I know Craig's got some more bits he wants to take us through, uh, but before that, let's share with you, give you a chance to get your pictures sent in to us. Whilst you do that, here's all the details on how you can watch and shop at the same time. Hi, I'm Joe from Crafters TV, and I'm here to show you how you can grab the best deals and shop whilst you watch during our shows. So the best way to watch us is always on Crafters TV. Head on over to our homepage and go to Crafters TV. You can see all of our shows, offers, and even shop while you watch. 
Now if you want to get involved and comment along, head over to our Facebook page. Come say hello, ask us some questions and lol with us. Or you can watch us on YouTube. Simply head to our Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Got a smart TV? You can even airplay directly onto your big screen. We're constantly adding new and exciting shows to our schedule, so don't forget to check in. It's never been easier to have us in your living room. It's always fun here at Crafters TV, so come join us as we create every day. Absolutely, it's always fun at Crafters TV. Oh, we've got a couple of paper pads that you guys are loving uh, that I'd actually like to share with you. They're very busy over on the website at the moment. The first one is actually one of our Knitwits uh, collection. Uh, it's the Bloom with Grace collection. These are absolutely awesome. Uh, of course, they're going to work fantastically with the Bloom with Grace wider collection, but they are great on their own as well. Look at the colourways there uh, in that particular one. You've got a really nice variation in here as well of different styles. They are double-sided, so you've got the perfect matte layer to go with your uh, top. You've got some lovely dog tooth print uh, in there, some more ditzy floor. It's a really lovely combination. 180 GSM, so a really nice weight, and you are going to get 36 double-sided sheets there in that one 14.99 or 16.95 as well as that something else that's proving busy is multi-buy on the pretty florals and the everyday brights now the pretty florals 24 sheets 300 gsm so this is a full-on card stock weight this one it is double-sided and it has a white course so if you want to sand it back gives you the option to do so you've got that one there 24 sheets and then you've got this one here which is 180 gsm it is 50 sheets of double-sided uh, Everyday Brights, and it's a real sort of core colour collection, this one here, which is fantastic. 27.48 or 34.94 does get you both here, which is absolutely brilliant value for money. It's a buy one, get one half price situation there for you uh, on that one. Don't forget, please keep getting your pictures into us over the next sort of 10 minutes or so uh, as you get your craft along finished off. It is definitely not too late to get them into a studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. Details there along the bottom of the screen. Now, uh, we've got about 25 minutes left on the show, so I'm sure Craig's going to inspire us yet more so. I shall certainly do my best. What we're going to do is we will do another workings, another mechanism, this time using the balloons, and we'll pop it into a card. And then what we can do is, uh, if you want to follow along with this one at another uh, later date, obviously we're doing it speeded up, you can then decorate the front of the card uh, whichever way that you like. So what we can do is let's go in with our large plates like we've done beforehand. So I'm going to go in first of all with our black matte cardstock and we're going to do the outline of the balloon. What we can then do is also bring in a piece of our white smooth stamping card. I'll also show you on this one because I didn't show you with the cupcakes. Remember how I was saying with the cupcakes you've got the score line that was in them? So this is where you can see it a bit better on the actual die. You've got the score line that also just imprints onto the die cut. So that is them onto there. So what we can do is let's use our tape and we're going to secure these into place. And then what we're going to do is this time we're going to go back to water reactive. Now for this demo, you, the products that I'm using won't necessarily be on the show, but you can have a look on the website and find them. And I'm going to go in with our water reactive in a moment. We're going to use spring meadow, lemon tonic, Chinese red, parakeet and fuchsia. But we will go over them again just in a moment. So we're doing two of these ones now, side by side. So we're doing that backdrop, we're doing it in the black card, and then what we're going to do is we've done that into our white stamping card. This is going to come out. They're very, they're much more simple to put together these than I presume when I saw them, Craig. You know, I think you automatically presume they're going to be overly complicated, don't you? But they yeah. really are simple. And I guess that's down to the engineering that's in the dies, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly that. It's the way that Leanne and her team have come up with uh, the, as you say, the engineering of these, the working of these. And it's also when it comes to the mechanism itself, it's one of those at first, it's daunting. So what I'll do, and the reason I want to really try and get another demo in, is what we'll do is we'll show you the mechanism this time. Instead of popping it into the card first, I'll pop it into the, the balloon working and then pop it into the card. And then that might be a, a better way to let you see how it works. Okay. So what we can do is we're going to come in now with our colours. 
So as I say, we're going with water reactive. We're doing spring meadow, lemon tonic, fuchsia, Chinese red and parakeet. And then I'm going to go into my trolley of tricks with all my blending tools and pads. So I'm going to go in and we're going to start to colour each of these balloons. So I'm going to go in, I've got a few, this is my stash of all my blending tools and pads. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to bring in a little bit of scrap card. I'm just going to take this off of um, here. And then what we can do is let's go in with this top one here. Underneath my yellow. And we're going to start to colour them. And I'm not going to be overly precise, but what I am going to do into any of these little working bits, I'm going to pop this scrap bit of card underneath and it slightly protects your other balloons so that you're not going to get colour elsewhere. So let's coat our pad up and then I'm going to go in. I'm just going to be careful that I don't catch this other balloon. And these are water reactors, these ones, did you say, Craig? These are the water reactive ones, yep. So that means that we'll have showed you how you can be using your pigment, how you could be using your quick dry, and then this is now another way in which you can be using your water reactive. And alternatively, you uh, touched upon it earlier on, Joe, maybe you want to do your paper piecing of them. Mm. You know, you've got that option as well. So what I can do is let's tuck these ones in again into place and we're just going to start to lay the colour up. And that's all that I'm going to do with all of these balloons. Some of them we'll do in the red, some we'll do in the green. We'll just have a play and we'll start to build up the colours. Awesome. Uh, and of course you can use uh, loads of, I guess any of your ink pads, Craig, really yeah. would work in this way, wouldn't they? they would. So you've really got loads of options when it comes to that. Remember as well that we've got another fantastic show coming up a little later. Uh, today me and craig are back for a color me happy show but we do have a launch as well we've got a launch of the brand new connie fong stamps and they come with the dies as well don't they craig so it's awesome so i know you loved uh, the connie fong stamps you've even got the dies now which will cut them out too it's going to be an amazing show there's loads on it once this show's done definitely go uh, and sh shop ahead and have a little look uh, then look your heads tomorrow here on crafters tv uh, we have got Play Your Crafts Right with Debbie Robinson, which is going to be fantastic. It's Debbie all day tomorrow and myself. We've then got a Debbie's Double Discount two-hour show. Uh, two-hour... Dubby... Dubby? Dubby? Doubles Debbie's... Do Debbie's Double Discount Craft Fault, which is going to be uh, for two hours from 3 p.m. here in the UK. That's 10 a.m. on the East Coast. And then we've also got Craft House coming up tomorrow night. Uh, as well, which will be fantastic here in the UK at 7 p.m., 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, which will be awesome. We've got another special guest joining us for that as well. Uh, but Johnny's teasing me. He's not letting me know who our special guest is just yet. So you will uh, have to uh, tune in and find out in the show tomorrow, which will be awesome. And then I think Ben will be back on um, Sunday, uh, and then he'll be here for a few days. Becky will be with you a little bit later in the week. I'll be back on Thursday then. Uh, next week, which will be awesome. We'll spend the whole weekend together, which will be lovely. Uh, Craig, what are you doing your weekend? Uh, what am I going to do with mine? I am, um, uh, hopefully it's still going to be nice, so we will uh, be able to uh, maybe sit into the garden. Nice. We'll do a little bit of prep for next well, week. It doesn't shows. even matter if it's not nice, does it? Because you've got a brand new patio heater that I've just oh, seen. I d yes, I got, wasn't expecting it to be delivered till Monday, so a nice little bonus. Uh, to uh, have it delivered today. So my, uh, I think we'll get that on. I think I'm also catching up with uh, one of our um, uh, social media gurus, uh, Sarah Jane. I think maybe our hubby as well. We'll Ooh. maybe take advantage of being able to sit in the garden. Nice. Maybe have a, a, a little bit of a drink. A wee dram. A wee dram. Which means, what does that mean, a small drink? Uh, yeah, yeah. We Never really a small drink, though, usually, is it? Not when it comes to gin or that. Drink no. responsibly, don't spill it, that's what I say. I, ga I, I gave her, funny enough, a, a WhatsApp earlier on saying, what do you need and drink? You know, just to make sure that I had mm. um, a nice selection of, you know, fizzy juice in the fridge. Fizzy juice. Peg loves the card, Craig. Kathy uh, wants to know if these dies will work through the mini. Mm, no, let's have a look and see. Let's bring in a folder. I've got a folder just here. So the dies are going to be, certainly the outline die is going to be too big. And yeah, 
too big for your mini or your go. Uh, I did touch upon at the start of the show, you can use it with your junior and your midi. What you would do is if you do put it, put it in with your junior, then let it cut obviously so far, because it's going to stick out the end of the plate, then what to do, once it comes out, turn the die around, stick it through again, and then that's going to enable you to cut that full length. Brilliant. So you can still use it with your smaller machines. Craig, it's quarter two. I'm guessing we are going to put the craft along in as the card of the show. I think so, eh? I think that's a wonderful idea. So, do you know what I think we will do? You, can't, you get the idea as to what I'm doing. So let's uh, show you the one that I've already pre-done. So doing exactly what I've done right here. And then this is what we're going to end up looking like. Oh, fantastic. So that's how it's looking. So let's bring in our die cut of our backdrop. We can, what have I done with my tacky glue? Here we are. So we're going to pop this one into here. So let's get our tacky glue into place. This actually reminds me when me and Ben done a little bit of balloon modeling. Balloon modeling. Balloon what did you make? Modeling. Uh, a little dog. Ah, oh, yeah. Did you did you give it a name? No, oh. I never. But I gave it a poofy tail though. Did you? Yeah. What's a I poofy did. tail? You know when you have seen those uh, balloon uh, magicians? You know when they put the end of the balloon at the ma in in their mouth, and you know Doesn't how they make very it COVID that, friendly. Well, no, I did obviously um, afterwards <laughs> go in with a, a wipe. But, um, you know, when they make the end of the balloon, that real circle? It was on the shelf for a while. It started to look a little bit limp towards the uh, end of its time on the shelf. But it looked amazing, Craig. I didn't realise you'd done that. I thought Ben had done that. No, I'd done it live on air. Wow. Including that Is there anything that man can't do? Who, Ben? He sings. He makes animals out of balloons. I know. What, not, what a man. It's not quite as talented as you, but don't tell him I said that. OK. I'm texting him right now. He'll be busy with the wife and kids. Here we go. So now that I've got that rightly stuck down, let's bring in our score tool again. So I think on this one, we'll probably, we can actually see the score lines uh, a bit better on this one. Well, I can up or close. I'm not sure if you can. Here, oh, here we go. Perfect. Oh. Thank you, Adam. Here we go. Here we are. Lord Adam on the are. Super Zoom today. I know. Doing a better job than Charlotte. Let's not tell her that, Houses. eh? Although... She might be watching. My Facebook Live I done the other night, Wednesday night from home, the compliments I was getting on my Zooming that I was doing, no, Charlotte wasn't there. I was doing it myself. Even Lord Adam would have been proud. Wow. And he doesn't give praise that often. You've heard him. He doesn't you sound really grumpy. <laughs> Did you hear him on my wake-up call? No, what was he I, saying? Exactly. My point. <laughs> wow, tough crowd, Adam. At least Johnny... You know, I still love you, Adam, don't worry. Johnny's always rushing to the microphone because he just wants to be speaking every single time. At least with Adam, you know, he'll get a morning. At least with Adam, what, what you see or what you hear... No, I'm going to keep digging. I'm not digging, I'm still going. Uh, what, what you see or what you hear is what you get. Georgina, phew, she sounds loud. <laughs> you tell him, Adam. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's all fun and games, isn't it? Uh, I wanted to know what you were going to say about Georgina. I was about to say Georgina's totally different. She sounds really uh, bubbly and happy. Oh, she's not like that behind the scenes. Oh, no. <laughs> Joke! Well. Wowzers. Joke. Wowzers. Good All job the office out. goes home at four, isn't it, on a Friday. Uh, Kaz Jones says, did you say you can do this technique with all the ink pads, even the quick dries, Craig? What paper would work best for that? Sorry for all the questions. Don't be sorry for the questions, Kaz. That's what we're here for. So the, what I've just been doing here, I would do with your water reactive. 
that's uh, blending the inks on. When it comes to the watercolour and like we've done in the craft along, then yeah, you can be using your quick dry or even your opaque pigment because you're putting them onto a glass mat, a non-porous surface. That means then that they're not going to dry. You're able to do your watercolour and with them. But to lay the colour on like I've just done, I would use your either your water reactive or you could use your pigment. You would just need to let them dry. Awesome. Well, Thanks for that, Craig. That uh, Debs loves the balloons. Yolanda says, great camera work. Uh, Teresa says, Adam, you're doing great. Don't listen to him. He's Adam still my favourite director that's working today. Adam's a hit. I don't have I don't have favourites. Oh, Adam's the OG when it comes to the directors. I don't have favourites. Well. My, my You've caused quite enough trouble, I think, now, don't you? My favourite was always on Wake Up Call when it was Laura and Adam. Laura and Adam, was it? Okay. Yeah. That was a bit. We, ha we, had, we had some, uh, some laughs. Did you? Then, yeah, we did. Here we go, right, yo, let's just do this before I get myself into trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got a real good uh, burnish of these ones. So that means that we've got our folded in the middle and then we've got our valley fold side by side. So what we can then do is let's come back in with our working. So this time what we'll do is we'll do it the opposite way as to what I've done beforehand. So let's hold it this way so that I'm able to show you. So on this bit here, let's use some of our tacky glue. So I'm only going to do maybe about halfway and then I'm going to do it the same on this bit here. And then what we, oh, let's pick that one up. So then what we can then do is if we come back into this one here. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to pop this one. So if we open them up, I'm going to do it this way. So that can go here. This one we need to tuck under. So if we tuck this one in, I'm going to maneuver it up ever so slightly. So we can get this one in. Let's move it down that little bit more. And then I'm going to press. I'm going to press here into place. And then what we can do is then this will start to give us that pop-up action. Nice. So we can see that. See, this is why it's a much better way to show you. So you've got one leg of the mechanism on the top, and then you've got the other leg stuck round onto there. And then what we can do is, I will, let's just put a couple of... Uh, bits of pattern paper so that you can see the balloon against it. Let's go in with our dotty tape runner for this one. We can then go all the way around here. Let's pop this into the middle. There. I'm I think we should here. do like job swap one day, Craig. I would like, love that. Johnny can come out and present. Uh, Adam can, uh, can come out and be our, our expert. I have a feeling that Adam might be more crafty than Johnny, you know. I'm not sure why. I think he's a bit more creative. What, what was that? Dead easy, apparently, according to Adam. Well, fighting talk now. Uh, and then I reckon you can direct, I'll produce, Craig. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, see, the only thing is, though, you guys at home won't be able to understand Adam. So we can put subtitles on. Definitely need subtitles. Watch on YouTube. You can auto-generate the subtitles there. It's quite hilarious sometimes, believe me. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's funny when that happens sometimes, isn't sometimes, it? Sometimes, because it's like, uh, it's what, what do they call it? It's AI, isn't it, that, uh, that builds the subtitles for the videos. So it's not someone typing it, and it sometimes hilariously mishears some of the things we say. Mm -hmm. I actually thought it was someone typing, is it not? What for everything? No, it's just it's all, it's all AI. It's all uh, it's just a, it, the sound goes through a computer program and it just automatically generates ah, subtitles. Right, but they're doing the courtrooms. They've got the scriber. The what? They're like the scriber. You know the ones that type the out every single. Oh, that's thing. only because um, you know. Yeah, so it can be done. legally binding. I mean, no one's going to get banged up because of Crafters TV, Craig. <laughs> banged up means going to jail. Just before anyone says it means something else, it means going to prison. Here we go. So we've got the workings there with that balloon. So you can see how it pops up. Let's just get that going again. So That's awesome. So I would have it that way. And then you can decorate the card as you wish. There we go. 
Awesome. I think that looks brilliant, Craig. A really nice idea. Uh, and again, you talked about paper piecing that. I think with things like mirror and matte mirror, that would look absolutely awesome as well. Mm -hmm. Now, lots of you have been sending your pictures in, which is awesome. This is great, isn't it, Craig? See, everyone's craft alongs at home. Rebecca's done this one, Craig. That's so cool, isn't it? I love the colour combination as well. Really, really nice. Really nice. Loving that. Mary Lee's done this. I love the background she's used there. Oh, wow. That is really good. Once again, love that colour combination too. Oh, PP Pam's done it a little differently and popped pictures into hers. Oh, how nice is that? Mm, of course, to really show you, you can go completely different if you so wish. Absolutely. You do you, as I say. Stephanie has done this one here. Oh, I love how she's done it. Is that like a... What card would you call that, Craig? It's like she's done it inside a card yeah. and then she's used that amazing... Um, what was it called? Uh, build a scene. Build, uh, yeah, the last uh, build a scene. Large scene. Yeah, that's, that's that amazing. looks like an eight by eight card, and then an, so maybe about a seven by seven with the uh, twist and pop on the right hand side. That's phenomenal. That's awesome. Really, really love that, Stephanie. If you've got any others, uh, if you're just finishing up now, obviously probably a little bit late to send them into us, or maybe you're going, to, you, maybe you're planning on doing the craft along between shows then what you can do is you can send us pictures uh, before or during that later show that we've got coming up in a bit, which is your Colour Me Happy show, 7pm here in the UK, 2pm on the East Coast, 11am uh, uh, West Coast time. So uh, send that into us. Uh, let me take you one more time back through what you're getting in this particular collection, because as I said earlier, and I've said all the way through, you can watch the show back at any point, as you can all of our shows that we bring to you here on Crafters TV. So all of these now, make a note of this craft along, and then come back and do this in your own leisure. You've got the cupcake in here, which is this one just here, that you saw Craig using during our fantastic craft along. We also have the balloons, which are these ones here, which are awesome. Then you've got your presents. This would be great at Christmas. I, and the, the thing is with these, they're all versatile, aren't they? The designs that are in here, you can use for lots of different things. You've got your hearts in here as well. Maybe that would be nice to send someone you haven't seen for a while. Uh, you can send them some love in the form of a pop-out. Then you've also got the oval frames in here and you have the frames too. They are available to you on a two for 30 or 35 dollars. What I would say is if you're going for them on a two for 30 or 35, make sure you um, go for the mechanism as well, which is this one just here. You will need to get that separately in order to use that in conjunction with these. Seven pounds 99 in the UK, 9.95 if you're in the US and you want to go for that particular one there. Craig, uh, colour me happy, two hours time. What can we expect from that? Well, we are going to go all bright and colourful when it comes to these brand new stamps. So whether you are want to be using your tri-blend, your class heats, uh, sparkle pens, aqua pens, we're going to use a variety of different mediums as well when it comes to the Conifon stamps as well. You guys are already loving them as well. You guys stateside maybe got a little bit of a, a treat tease earlier on. It was earlier on this week, it was, absolutely. Um, so uh, I know so many of you are loving it, but so many have been waiting until they launch today, which is the day. And I'm absolutely proud, not only to be back on Colour Me Happy, but I get to do these stamps as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun, Joe. It's going to be loads and loads of fun. Don't forget, there's always a free download every Friday as well for Colour Me Happy. So pop yourself over to the website, craftscompanion.co.uk, uh, is it .com? One of the two, uh, slash colour, hyphen me, hyphen happy. Uh, and you'll be able to see uh, exactly what that is, which is lovely. It's a lovely little uh, Brucey bonus for you. Don't forget to check out your baskets as well, uh, and make sure you go and have a little shop ahead. I'm here, it's very, very busy for that later Colour Me Happy show, so I'm sure we're going to have uh, a really, really time. Uh, a re we don't have many of that big collection I'm just hearing, Johnny's telling me, which is the Connie Fong stamps and dies, so uh, do go across there and grab those if you want them. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll see you... Uh, back here in a couple of hours. So in fact, uh, whilst we uh, pop ourselves off, we're going to have a cup of tea, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit of uh, dinner as well. I think uh, so. Let's leave you with a little saucy song of what is coming up uh, here on Crafters TV. Later today, we've got our Colour Me Happy show where we're going to be showcasing the brand new designs from Connie Fong, which are all about the angels. Come and have a look at these beautiful designs. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I know you're going to love these as much as we do here at Crafters Companion. So come and join Joe and Craig at 7 pm UK time, 2 pm Eastern time, where we're going to be everything Connie Fong, Colour Me Happy. 
Now tomorrow, myself and Joe are going to be here at 12 p.m. UK time, 7 a.m. Eastern time for our Play Your Crafts Right Show, where we've got amazing deals, amazing demos, and amazing prizes. So do come along and join us then.